Hello, and thank you for watching this July 13th weather update, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribull. I feel like I'm starting to sound like a broken record when talking about all the rain in parts of the Corn Belt that we had received over the last seven days. Precipitation has been consistently recycled across a large part of the Corn Belt, and repeated resurgences of humid air from the Gulf of Mexico have helped fuel the frequent thunderstorm activity. As we have forecast last Monday, regions from Oklahoma through Missouri into Illinois and Indiana received several inches of rain. In some locations, the rain totals from last week exceeded the average monthly total for July. We have discussed at length over the past few weeks how Missouri and Indiana have been the hardest hit states, as the rains have delayed and prevented planting. We have also talked about how the abundance of precipitation in these states and Illinois is dramatically impacting plant health in low-lying, flood-prone fields that now have had standing water for several weeks. Outside of these areas, where fields are draining well, both beans and corn do look great. However, nutrient loss due to excessive rainfall will likely result in some issues with this year's yield. First, nutrient loss will often manifest itself in tip back. Any stress on the plant will result in aborted kernels near the tip of the ear. Unfilled kernels like we see pictured here may result in at least 5% or more yield loss. In addition to this stress, northern corn leaf blight and southern corn rust have been noted throughout the Midwest now. Gray leaf spot is also a concern. Crop scouting is highly recommended, although timing of fungicide application windows may be very narrow due to more predicted rain. With December corn trading above 440 last week and November beans above 1020, we need to take a careful look at any potential weather stresses this week, especially for corn, as the next 20 days are crucial for yield. Let's talk severe weather first. Shown here is the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlook map for Monday. On Sunday, severe thunderstorms pushed the Minnesota, southwest Wisconsin, and northeast Iowa, bringing damaging winds and localized large hail. The remnants of these storms will serve as the trigger for a new storm development on Monday. The atmosphere is primed to support storms capable of large hail, 70-plus mile-an-hour winds, and possibly some tornadoes. If you live in the region highlighted here, be sure to keep an eye on the radar as these storms develop. Looking at the National Weather Service's hazards map, we can see evidence of potential crop stress across parts of the Corn Belt. First, with the storms, there is a flash flood watch out for parts of Illinois and Indiana. Heat will be building into the interior of the country this week, too, and as a result, heat advisories are out for a large section of the country with excessive heat warnings in parts of Missouri and Kansas for Monday. Expect heat index values to top 105 degrees in some locations. Turning our attention to this heat first, here is a look at Monday's high temperatures. The solid black line denotes locations that will likely see 90 plus degree high temperatures, while locations enclosed in the dashed black line will likely break 100. Thankfully, heat in excess of 97 degrees stays out of most of the Corn Belt on Monday. One of the concerns this time of year is not getting cool enough temperatures at night to let the corn rest. If temperatures remain above 70 degrees Fahrenheit at night, the corn will continue to expend energy through respiration, which can impact yield. Tuesday morning low temperatures will remain in the low 70s across a large part of the Corn Belt. By Tuesday afternoon, temperatures soar into the low 90s for a large part of the Corn Belt, while the dangerously high temperatures are kept in western Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Most of the Corn Belt will not break 95 degrees, which is the temperature at which serious heat stress can start. Thankfully, Wednesday morning lows are expected to be a few degrees cooler across Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, allowing the corn a chance to rest. And by Wednesday afternoon, the area of 90-plus degree heat shrinks, which is great news for the 2015 crop. Thursday's temperatures are very similar to Wednesday's, but there is some uncertainty in that temperature forecast as more precipitation moves into the Corn Belt from the west. In terms of rainfall this week, after the squall lines of severe thunderstorms move through on Monday, the next large organized chance of precipitation across the Corn Belt doesn't arrive in Iowa until around Thursday. There will be the chance for isolated showers and isolated thunderstorms across much of the Corn Belt Monday through Thursday, but several locations will get a chance to dry out quite a bit, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. Here's the five-day precipitation totals for this week. 
Again, a lot of the precipitation shown on this map falls on Monday, with scattered storms throughout the week, and then another organized area precipitation arriving later in the week. To finish, let's look into this weekend and the start of next week at the 6-10 to 10 day temperature and precipitation forecasts. We can see that above average temperatures are again forecast for the eastern two-thirds of the country, with the greatest deviation from average being in the southeast. Much of this same area will see a below average probability in rainfall too. The Intermountain West might see cooler temperatures, while the northern tier of the country has a higher probability than normal of being wetter than average. As always, we at Agri will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our Morning Farm Report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.